If you're thinking about becoming a commuting student or you are already a commuting student, then this video is for you. Hi, I'm Tiff and I am a commuting student here at Staffordshire University and in this video I am going to be sharing my tips and advice on how to make commuting more affordable. I am going to start off by stressing that any of the figures or prices that I mention in this video are based on my experience as a commuter from Birmingham to Stoke-on-Trent and so any of those prices will change depending on where you're located and I also want to stress that these figures are not meant to scare you, they're not meant to put you off. I'm just giving an honest and realistic idea of the prices of commuting and how to combat them. In this first section of the video, I am going to be focusing on train travel specifically. And the most important thing to talk about here is the 16 to 25 year old rail card. This is essentially the train travel version of a student discount where you pay £30 a year for a rail card and it gives you a third off your train tickets. Now, some of you might be thinking that a third off travel doesn't sound like a lot, but with the figures I'm about to show you, you'll see how important and useful it is to have a rail card. So I did some maths with the train prices from Birmingham to Stoke-on-Trent, and I decided to look at how much I have saved with my rail card. So I looked at how much travel for one year um, at university would have cost me without a rail card and how much it cost me with one and I found out that traveling from Birmingham New Street to Stoke-on-Trent should have cost me £2,000 a year but if we take that £2,000 use our rail card and take a third of the price off it only cost me £1,400 so that's a massive £600 being saved using the rail card so trust me it's worth it the next point I want to talk about still relates to the rail card and it is the three year bulk buy option. So I previously stated that the 16 to 25 year old rail card costs £30 a year. However, when you go to buy your rail card, you can choose an option where you pay for it for three years for just £75. That means that instead of paying £30 a year for the rail card, it would even out to be £25 a year. So you're saving money in that aspect too. So I would definitely say bulk buy your rail cards and go for the three year option because one, it's cheaper, but then also you don't have to worry about remembering to renew it and it just makes the most sense. I've also got a third trick for when you're booking your train tickets and that is based on the times that you book them in terms of when you're going to Stoke and when you're coming home. I find that buying return tickets are cheaper than open returns however that does mean that you you've got to stick to a schedule and there's no leeway but if there's a day where you're not planning on doing anything out of the ordinary you're not going out then do go with the return tickets because you are going to save a couple of quid and even then judge the times you're leaving and try and get off peak tickets where you can Obviously, this may not be the case for when you're going to uni because a lot of the time you're getting there early and that is during peak hours. However, when you're coming home, it's worth looking out for those cheaper options. Now, in this section of this video, I want to talk about the additional travel costs that you, you might forget about. And the biggest one for this is getting to and from the train station. So I know in Stoke-on-Trent, the university campus is v literally across the road from the train station, so you don't have to worry about your travel costs there. However, for me in Birmingham, I have to travel to my nearest train station, and so obviously I have to spend a bit more on my commuting costs. So when it comes to budgeting and getting an evaluation of how much commuting is going to cost you, do not forget to put money aside for that, as well as just your train travel. A piece of advice with this kind of travel is public transport on buses are often a lot cheaper than things like taxis. For me personally, an Uber from my house to the train station costs £10. So that means that daily I would be spending an extra £20 a day on top of my train tickets, which is just not doable for me at all. However, on the bus that I get, it costs me £2 there. So it cost me only £4 on top of my train travel rather than the extra 20 However, of course, with public services, there are often strikes or delays. So you should still keep in mind that even if you are going for the cheaper bus travel options, that occasionally you may have to fork out 
the odd extra money for a secondary backup plan to get to the, your train on time. I also have a tip when it comes to getting the bus, which is to weigh up all the different modes of payment and deals that you can get. For example, in Birmingham, it costs £4.50 for a day ticket. They also have a student bus pass, which is a full weekly thing that costs £46. However, because I only go in university two days a week now and I only get two buses a day, for me, the day saver and the student pass doesn't really save me much money at all. So I prefer to just tap on and tap off with my card um, which caps anyway at the maximum kind of deal that you can get. So make sure you work out exactly how much you're going to be travelling before deciding to go for a bigger bundle for tickets because even though it seems like the cheaper option, it may not be. So that's it from me. If you are thinking about becoming a commuting student, please take these tips and advice on board. I hope I haven't scared you off. I hope it all goes well. And if you have any more questions on commuting, feel free to leave a comment and I'm sure I'll get back to you and give you any more advice that I can. Bye.